As we prepare for the scripture reading from Psalm 51, we remember that this is a psalm attributed to David, written in response to Nathan when he came and confronted David about his sin. Let us prepare our hearts hearts for scripture. May we hear the Spirit speaking through these words. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desired truth in my inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing loud, aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good in Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Against you alone, against God alone have I sinned. That's what David says in Psalm 51. When I read that, I thought, maybe David and I didn't hear the same story. Maybe David Nathan list David sin list David sins. So let's go over that again, just so that we're all on the same page. Nathan said to David, on behalf of God, Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in God's sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. At the very least, David committed adultery and murder, not to mention the question of consent in his interaction with Bathsheba. At the very least, David's sin hurt two people. He hurt Uriah, and he hurt Bathsheba. But that is too simple. When we hurt people, 
we don't just hurt them. We hurt those who care about them. Part of our humanity is our interconnectedness. Our connection to others is core to our identity, to how we love and to how we feel loved. A word for this is solidarity. There are lots of other people in this story who were hurt, who go unmentioned. When David slept with Bathsheba, he hurt both Bathsheba and Uriah. When David killed Uriah, he hurt Bathsheba and he hurt Uriah's family, his parents, his siblings, his friends, and he took away any chance of children that Uriah and Bathsheba could have had from that time on by the sins that David committed, because all of those that David committed, because all of those people, whether named or not, whether they knew the nature of Uriah's death or Bathsheba's pregnancy, they were all hurt. Hurt by the actions, hurt by the secrets, hurt by watching their loved ones suffer. This is the ripple of sin in the world that hits us like a tidal wave against the people who are closest to it and then flows further and further out into the we are all swimming in. Whether this tidal wave is institutionalized so that it wipes out whole groups of people and pushes them to the margins, or whether this tidal wave ba bears the face of a family member or a friend, the tidal wave of sin is deeply personal and affects real people and the people who really love them. So where's the good news? The good news is that God is waiting in those same waters with us. As much as we are connected in our solidarity with one another, God is in radical solidarity with us. I believe that God felt whatever Bathsheba felt when David called her into her quarters. I believe that God felt what Uriah felt when he was betrayed and killed by the orders of his king. I believe that God grieved with everyone who was hurt in this situation. And I believe that God continues to feel our pain with us today. This is that whole Matthew 25 thing, right? It's that whatever we do unto one another, we do unto God. In this sense, David is right that he sinned against God because whatever we suffer, God promises to suffer with us. And whenever we heal, we forgive and we reconcile. We do that with God too. But even this is too simple because the truth is that we are messy beings. We sin and we are hurt by sin. Our mess muddies the waters. There aren't clear sides. Then sinners can't just stay over there while the righteous stay safely on this side because then one hand might belong over here, but the other hand belongs over there, and we just can't get our foot out of our mouth in the meantime. David is in the muddy waters. David is both a man after God's own heart, and he is an adulterer and a murderer. We don't know what Bathsheba and Uriah's sins were, but they were human, so they were probably messy people too. So what does God do with all our mess? God joins us in those muddy waters. Maybe it's time to explore what this water really is. So the mud is our mess and we're splashing around, throwing our sin all over the place. But there's something about this water that still unites us. We're going to sing a song later that says, there's a wideness in God's mercy 
like the wideness of the sea. Soak that in for a moment. Feel yourselves floating in a sea of God's mercy that connects you to all people. God surrounds us with God's mercy. Mercy for those who sin and mercy for those who are hurt by sin. And we're all in that water together. In fact, we are all baptized in that same muddy and merciful water. It is here that God claims us. Here that God stands in solidarity with us. And here that God unites us. I've been working at a hospital this summer as a chaplain. I knock on doors and see if patients, family, or staff could use some company or care. The patients at the hospital have taught me so much about these muddy and merciful waters that we all swim in. I've been honored to hear stories of people's greatest regrets, their shame, their guilt, their pain. I've held the stories of people who have given forgiveness, people who need to be forgiven, and people who struggle to forgive themselves. There was one patient who told me their story of forgiveness when a priest came to give them communion before their surgery. They hadn't taken communion in years, but said that they experienced a wellness they had never known before. They felt God forgive them as they shared in the bread and the cup prepared by Jesus Christ. Within the blank walls of that hospital room that was full of sickness and shame, God met this person in the waters of their mess, their sin and suffering. God heard their confession and their sincerity, and God gave them a taste of wellness, forgiveness, and grace. The next thing they said to me surprised me even more. The patient said, God was so ready to forgive me. Friends, God is so ready to forgive us. But first we have to recognize our wrongs. God is so ready to forgive us, but we have to apologize to the people we hurt. God is so ready to forgive us, but it is hard to rest in the fullness of God's mercy until we forgive ourselves. So God, we need you. Be our guide. Guide us as we ask for forgiveness. Guide us as we forgive. And teach us how to swim together in these muddy and merciful waters. Amen.